a lot of the sound that we see right now really is quite abstract and it focuses on the deconstruction of sound. They really blur the distinctions between what is considered sound, noise and music. And generally I find the concepts quite difficult for a wider audience to understand. Um, it's not really easily accessible. Most of my work is large-scale 3D stuff and I've never really had the chance to explore music within my work. And ultimately, as an artist, it's all about forms of expression and music and art, they're the same. They're just a way to express a concept or an idea. So I thought it would be a really cool thing to try and combine these two forms of expression together. As an artist, for me, a lot of my work, I like to make it as accessible as possible to the wider public. One of my main goals is to encourage more people to experience art. I don't want them to be put off by something that's too complex or with really difficult concepts to grasp. At the end of the day, it's all about giving people people a chance to experience what you've created. So that's when I had the idea to create an interactive sound art installation. In terms of visualisation, what I did was I took the very basic idea of sound production. So within a song you have multiple layers, synthesizers, percussion, samples, and each individual layer you call a stem. It's one long cylindrical shape that rises from the ground at its most basic. You know, you think of like a flower stem or something like that. A lot of music production uses audio loops as building blocks to create sound. And audio loops are essentially uh, repeating percussive or melodic sequences that repeat itself over a period of time. Essentially, it's a, a loop, like a circle, and so I took that element as well. And then the other idea was, you know, how would we arrange it? Um, I mean, in its most simple form, you could just have multiple stems in one line. Or alternatively, you could have them arranged in a sort of square shape or rectangular shape. But the issue here is, if one person were to interact with one pole at the end, they wouldn't be able to see what the other person at the very end was doing. And then similarly in a rectangular shape, this person in the corner wouldn't really be able to see what this other person was doing. So then the only logical way of doing it was to arrange it in a circle. The idea of time and its relationship with sound is actually very interesting in terms of how we measure sound. Every time we measure sort of how loud something is or the pitching, it's always by time. I was wondering how many loops I could have that would create a distinct sound. I started to plot all the different structures within it and as I was doing it, it sort of slowly turned into, you know, essentially what looked like a clock. Coming back to the idea of the clock configuration or the circle, obviously a clock has 12 individual units, so I selected 12 distinct audio loops. So I thought it was a really beautiful idea to represent time in that configuration. With the first design, I had the stem and the loop or the ring. Very basically, the ring sat on top of the stem and it would all be arranged on this giant speaker. So it would be one uniform structure underneath. And then essentially what people would do would touch the ring and it would activate the sound. In theory and in my head, it sounded kind of cool. But then when I rendered it, uh, it sort of looked like a giant birthday cake. So unfortunately that idea didn't really work, so I had to figure out a new way of representing like visually um, my idea. The second attempt at the design, so instead of having a stem with a ring on top, I removed that and then actually built within one pole structure a speaker inside. So instead of having one giant speaker, you'd have 12 individual speakers naturally because each pole is cylindrical in shape at the top is a, is a ring shape structure already. And then instead of having to touch something to activate the sound, I decided on having motion sensor activated uh, sound. So all you'd have to do is put your hand over the top and it would activate the sound. Then when it came to how to power it, originally I had it all wired up, but I thought it was cleaner visually if each pole structure had its own power source. So then it was wireless and it just looked cleaner. 
With the LEDs, we had to really figure out a lot of different things. So how many LEDs we would use per pole, how we would place them, and also what levels of brightness. And these three things really affected the light diffusion and what we would see. We encountered a few problems and the first one was the light diffusion wasn't as great because originally we only had one outer pole. So instead what we decided to do to solve this problem was to add a second inner pole. The second problem was the amount of heat that was being generated by the LEDs. So we needed better ventilation and at the time the base didn't really have this feature. So we built holes within the design and then it would allow for the air to pass through like a chimney so the heat would escape. The other thing is because we were using an aluminium pole in the centre, obviously that got quite hot so we had to replace that with a different material. With the base, the original prototype we had, it only really accounted for the outer pole. But when we decided that actually we needed a secondary inner pole, I designed it and to accommodate that so it sit nicely. And then also because we had ventilation holes, that was also redesigned to allow for that too. When it came to the sensors, that was a very complex thing for us to investigate and research, because originally we had thought about using ultrasound sensors, but when we tried using them, they were very bulky and it really affected the silhouette of the actual structure. So ultimately, after a little bit of research and more experimenting, we settled on two different sensors. So one infrared sensor, which would be used to detect motion at the top of the pole, and then a proximity sensor that sits at the base of the pole, which detects motion in the vicinity of the area by using microwaves. This is my first interactive installation. It involved a lot of different skill sets. So you had things like creative conceptualization, 3D modeling, product design, basic electronic engineering and programming. And it was just really cool sort of bringing all these different areas of expertise and skills together. Designing something functional from scratch really pushed me out of my comfort zone. The real difficulty is we are programming a microcontroller with no graphical interface. So you don't know if it works until you've programmed everything, plugged all the components in and assembled the pole. And it's incredibly nerve wracking when you're switching it on for the first time. So when you first enter into the space, the first thing you'll see are 12 poles emitting one uniform colour. And as you approach the poles, the colour and the light start to change and oscillate a little bit. But then if you were to stay completely still for an extended number of seconds, all the poles would go back to a uniform white colour. And when you put your hand over each pole, the sound activates and the light changes. And if you were to put your hand over the pole again, the sound would deactivate and the light would change back. Although the primary feature of the installation is sound generation, colour, transition and light activation is really the secondary feature but complementary feature of the work. So in terms of the light and what it does, it really acts as an artificial divider of the space and it disrupts the participants' experience of the installation. And because you've got both light and sound happening at the same time, there's a sort of double sensory experience which makes it even more engaging and impactful. And when you've got lots of people interacting with it at the same time, things are happening randomly, the colours are changing, the sounds are being activated and it's incredibly exciting to watch and listen to. Um, but What's really cool about it is because things are happening randomly, you have no control over what you see and what you hear, and that makes for a very interesting experience. I invited a group of incredibly talented dancers to come and interact with the work and to see how they would synchronise and choreograph their movements to generate the sound, and also how they would move their bodies in terms of the sounds that were generated. What I did was I allowed the dancers to come in and gave them an opportunity to interact with the work and it was just very interesting for me as an artist and designer to really see how they would move and what would they do and their reactions in real time. One of the central ideas of the work is sound generation and creation of a distinct sound rather than random noises. You'd end up with something that's incredibly rhythmic and very multi-layered in terms of what you hear. That's really the idea behind getting a crew of dancers in because 
like musicians, they're very good at keeping rhythm. But on top of that, they're very aware of their body and they're able to move in time with the music. And that's incredibly exciting because it really expands on the concept of using physical motion to generate sound. It's this really fascinating codependent experience, which I think is great. There are two main things I want people to take away from this installation and the first is the idea of creating in a group. The installation is really designed for group participation. I mean you can interact with it as an individual but the more people you have the more interesting and the more complex the sounds can be and really the work is designed to encourage people to work together in a group whether it's to create harmony or dissonance regular rhythm or irregular rhythm, minimal or more complex sound structures. The second idea is co-creation. I, as the artist, am creating work with you. We are creating together. And without your participation, it would just be an installation of 12 white lights. Beautiful, but very boring. But the minute you step into the space and you interact with the installation, you dictate the physical environment. You define what you hear and what you see. And in fact, you as a participant become a creator. And that, I think, is very special.